Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to look at an example of a hypothesis test when we don't know sig, but our parameter of interest is mu. Okay, so I've got some data from a few years back of some gas prices. All right, we take a sample of 21 gas stations in our area, and we want to see, so the, the national average is 350. Maybe you, you think it's cheaper in your area, or actually lower. Than that. Now also here notice every once in a while we'll use an alpha that's not 0.05 so here we're going to use a different alpha 0 0.01. Alright so we know that we see averages we know mu is our parameter of interest okay but we don't see anything in our problem about sigma okay so we're thinking alright extra variability here we don't know sigma so we're going to want to use t so our first step to a hypothesis test is, of course, state your hypotheses. All right, so we know the national average was 350. We think that our average is actually less than 350. All right, so it's a left-tailed test, and remember alpha was 0.01. Now we're using T, okay, so we will actually look at our data here in a second, but we know we collected 20, a sample of size 21, so our degrees of freedom is 20. All right, so here's our data. You want to use that data and follow along. Okay, just calculating summary statistics for that. Our mean, 4.3, a little bit low that, below that 3.5 that we were looking for. All right, remember we want to use T, but our conditions, okay, we don't know sigma, small sample, that's usually the context we use T in. So then we need to check to make sure we have symmetry, we also, so our histogram looks pretty good symmetry wise, we also need to check for outliers. Alright, box plot looks good. Alright, I'm going to do both of these with a normal plot here. Alright, so if I go to graph, probability plot, single, gas prices, a normal plot in mini tab here looks pretty good. Alright, so we're in good shape, we've met the assumptions to use our t distribution. So let's remember there's two ways we can go about it. We can go critical value method, we can go p-value method. So let's go critical value first. Since we're using t, we have more information involved, right? We got our degrees of freedom, we got our alpha, and we know it's a left-tailed test. Okay, so let's look up our value in the table that we should be using. Okay, so remember alpha alpha is 0.01. Okay, so since alpha is 0.01, now here's where I need to think, okay, what kind of test? It's left-tailed. Well, that means my critical value is going to be negative. It also means I don't have to divide alpha by 2. Okay, so I would look up this 0.01. My degrees of freedom was 20. So I find where 20 and 0.01 intersect, and that is right here. It's 2.5. To eight. All right, now remember, your t-table gives you the area to the right. It gives you positive critical value. So just remember, since this is a left-tailed test, okay, I'm going to need to make that critical value negative. So negative 2.528. Right, you can check yourself, graph yourself in Minitab, check yourself in Excel, however you want to do that. All right, next step, calculate my test statistics. So I use my summary statistics, boom, plug and chug into my formula that's pretty easy all right so there we go there's my test statistic negative 3.14 equal value is negative 2.58 so it looks like this is going to fall in our rejection region all right but we'll we'll check that in a little bit now our next step is to find our p-value right but here is where we kind of run into some limitations right we know how to find a p-value with our z table and because, but our z-table, it had every z-value that you could want from to two decimal places, and it had a whole bunch of probabilities to four decimal places. All right, but remember what the setup of our t-table looks like. Right? Our t-table, we only have these commonly used values. We only have critical values here. Okay, so of course, we can always use technology to find an exact p-value. Right? That's, that's always an option. Or we could just go for the critical value method. We know the critical value method and the p-value method will lead us to the same conclusion. So with a t-test, 
if we feel confident in our critical value method, we can just scrap the p-value. Right? But we usually do want a p-value, and if you feel comfortable with that, then we can estimate our p-value from our table. So remember, our p-value would be represented by this area, since it's a left-tailed test, the area to the left of our test statistic. So let's try to estimate that with our table. All right, now remember we're working with 20 degrees of freedom here. So, and remember our table gives us the area to the right. Well, we know the T distribution is symmetric. So the area to the right of positive 3.14 should be the same as the area to the left of negative 3.14. So I'm going to go with 20 degrees of freedom and try to find 3.14. Well, I don't see 3.14, but it's somewhere between these two numbers. That's telling me that my p-value is somewhere between these two numbers up here, 0.001 and 0.005. All right, so we've estimated that p-value. Now, ultimately, we don't really need to know that exact p-value, right? Because what are we doing with the p-value? We're comparing it to alpha. So if alpha is 0.01, Right, well, then we, we can just say, well, I don't know exactly what that p-value is, but what I do know is it's less than 0.01. All right, we could follow up on this with some kind of technology. I could use Excel. Excel gives me this p-value, or we could graph it in many tab, however we want to. Right. So we've got our critical value. It fell in our test statistic fell in our rejection region. Our p-value is smaller than alpha. We rejected. So we're saying we do here have statistically significant evidence to reject the null. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.